And good evening. Uh, welcome to Talking to Therapy. What are we going to talk about this evening? Well, if you've got a question, I'm here to help. And um, if you haven't got a question, um, I'm going to talk about gum pockets. So what do I mean by a gum pocket? Well, I basically, I'm going to sort of keep this fairly broad. I mean the space between your gum and your tooth. Now, in health, you have a little crevice at the neck of your teeth, which is about two to three millimeters. So it's a little crevice. It's a bit like just underneath your nail. It's okay, you know, but you've got that little bit. And you know, just like your nails, if you're in the garden or you're doing some dirty work so you're scrubbing the floor or doing something, the bit that gathers the gum is underneath your fingernail. It's that little crevice. So you have a little crevice like that just underneath the gum margin where your gum actually fits. Okay, so I purposely put this cup off so that you can see because I often describe this as this is a cup at the neck of your tooth. And what you're wanting is this little crevice, um, there's a point where it attaches to the root of the tooth underneath. So it's a little crevice here, and this is the bit that we're talking about. It's what they call a gingival stuff, just if you want it in technical terms. And when you go to the dentist and hygiene, and you feel that they're stabbing you. They're not really, but I, I know what you mean. And um, they're putting a little probe down there and they're poking and they're walking away around. And if I can find one I made earlier in best blue paper fashion, um, they will walk this little probe. You can see, you can see that, you can see that. You can actually go around. And what they're doing is they're measuring how deep that little crevice is around your, the neck of your tooth, around the gum line. What they want to know is where is that gum attached down to the tooth and then also to the bone because if that gets deep, they're wanting to think why is that deeper than it should be. Um, if it's bleeding, that's telling them there's inflammation there. So again, healthy gums don't bleed. So if that little crevice there when they're touching that is bleeding, they're going, what's going on here? But that little crevice is the bit that can do a process is the bit that you really need to change. So I just put that on to give you an idea. Because what can happen is the bacterial plaque, so the biofilm that forms on the surface of your tooth. So you take your fingernail, scrape your finger down your tooth, and you start to feel that gel like film. That's the plaque biofilm developing on the surface of your tooth. Now, it develops in all the little places that go undisturbed the little crevice at the neck of your teeth, in between your teeth. And um, that's where it likes to lie on the stir because then it can thicken. It can actually um, make a really nice home for the bacteria that live in your mouth. And there's five, 700 bacteria that live in your mouth. There's good ones and there's bad ones, but they all colonate the biofilm. They colonate that plaque biofilm and in at the gum margin and they're in at this little crevice. And that's the bit that is so important to clean. And it's often a bit that is missed. So just let me, I just want to switch here so I know what I'm looking at here. So it's a bit that you, we often miss if we don't take the time to clean it really, really well. So hold on then, because there's something really funny happening here. Right, okay. Just let it keep going. Stop it. I'll just keep going. Uh, so this crevice is really important. So when you're brushing, you want to make sure that you get your toothbrush bristles in at the neck of your teeth there, in at that little gum crevice there, in at the, the sulcus, the gum sulcus, the gingival sulcus, that little crevice. You need to get your bristles just to engage in that crevice. You're not trying to stretch it, you're not trying to push it away down. You're just trying to clean gently into that crevice. Now, me being me, I have to have a little demonstration of this tooth, obviously. And what you have with that too, this is this furry stuff is the plaque biofilm. And you can see how it likes stick in there, undisturbed underneath the gum margin. So if you're only cleaning the bit in your teeth up here, you're going to completely miss this stuff that is gathering in this little crevice. So it's really important that you actually clean that crevice that uh, maybe better than what like to do clean that crevice really well and get you to engage there. So there's a certain amount of pressure you need to put in your toothbrush bristles to clean that 
gingival cleanse as well from turban. So when you take the toothbrush, get more of the toothbrush. Oh, 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 favorite. So when you get your, your toothbrush, you want to actually point your bristles down in at the gum margin, but you're cleaning that gingival cleverage, cleaning into that little gum pocket. Now, this professionals don't really call them gum pockets until it's more than four millimeters. They don't really talk about a gum pocket. They don't really measure, they don't get really too concerned until it's over that sort of three, four millimeter point. And when that happens, then they can see something else is going on here. And um, the other thing they're looking for is does it bleed? And as I'm always saying to you, always reminding you, healthy gums don't bleed. So when you start cleaning, if you haven't been cleaning down into that gingival crevice, into that gum crevice, outside, inside, that you bite on, but make sure you're getting in at the, in, in at the gum crevice there. If you, if you haven't been doing that for a while and you start taking the time, watching what you're doing, getting the toothbrush right at the gum margin, it may well bleed and it's bleeding because it's inflamed. It's inflamed because the bacteria are irritating it. And the thing you've got to remember is the only way it's going to get any better is by getting rid of that bacterial plant biofilm because then the bugs have nowhere to live. If you've made them homeless, then the gums can start to heal. Okay, so healthy gums don't bleed. They may, if you haven't been cleaning thoroughly down there, they may start to bleed initially, but you can actually completely reverse that if it's only gingival salt of bleeding, okay? Now, what can happen with this cup is if the bacteria get down here and you haven't been disturbing them, you haven't been making the bacteria homeless, they get into the biofilm, they get themselves organized, they make, invite their mates around, they have a party, and they start to destroy and break down the little fibers, the little elastic fibers that hold your gum against the tooth. And what happens is they then go size, or no, depending if it's not for an old tooth. But basically, they go towards where the root of the tooth goes and they start to break that down. And what you get is a gum pocket, a periodontal pocket. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it's so important to so your dental team regularly, because they can pick up problems with your gums really, really early, but you may not even be aware of it. But once it gets to this point that the bacteria are down in there, you can't reach down there. The toothbrush bristles will not reach down deep. So they just cannot reach down far enough. So once this has actually developed into maybe a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten millimeter target, woo, and you're talking way down there stuff, um, you can't reach it, okay? not with an ordinary toothbrush anyway. So that's where we start to talk about how else can you get in there. Now, gum disease, gum inflammation is one reason that you can get a space. The other time that you might find a space between the gum and the tooth is if you have another tooth erupting behind it. So often, actually, in the image I put up earlier, um, I actually showed you at the very back of your mouth when a wisdom tooth is coming up, um, the space then between one tooth and where the other tooth hasn't come up, you can get this gum flap created. So let me show you. Okay. So what you have there is you can see that partly erupted wisdom tooth in behind here. Now the gum tissue then becomes sort of loose around that. And what happens is you can end up with that becoming really inflamed, really difficult to clean. Bacteria gets stuck in there. Um, it's being messed with the toothbrush. Because if you think about it, when you take a toothbrush and you go like that, you're not getting in there unless you're tipping the toothbrush. Or better still, as you go around there, swing the toothbrush sideways. So you're getting in at that. So you're cleaning in around that gum crevice. Better still, what you want to use is actually a, a single tufted brush. Now, single tufted brushes come in a variety of sizes. Um, so here's some of them. Let me show you. So um, different brands do different things, okay? Most of them are this sort of thickness, if you want to look at the bristles. So they're, they're quite chunky. Stubby is what probably the term I would use, the stubbiness of those. Some are pointed, some are blunt. You've got this one. This is a, a TP. This is actually an implant brush, but they've got longer bristles and they're quite soft. Now that can be really, really useful if you want to get 
deep in here. So let me do it this sideways so you can get in there and you can get in right down in that. Um, can you see the way the bristles then actually start to splay underneath the gum there? And that's what you're trying to do when we talk about actually cleaning into gum pockets. You spread the bristles down in underneath the gum margin. But the one that you really want, if you have that five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten millimeter gum pocket, periodontal pocket, is this boy here. This is what's called a super slim brush. And you can see the difference between those two is actually two things, the length of the bristles and also how much thinner they are. And what this does then is this allows you to get right down in underneath the gum. So what you want to do is get the bristles right down in here and you will find they will go as far down as you actually can reach so I mean if you've got a 10 millimeter pocket you may not get to the bottom of it but if you've had that cleaned out by a hygienist or a therapist or a gum specialist or even and, and just any member of the dental team if they have cleaned this area and you said you need to be really careful about your oral hygiene and get that clean if you start cleaning up from day one right down in there you can actually keep those root surfaces which are now exposed to the elements of your mouth, which they wouldn't have been otherwise because they were covered by the gum tissue, um, you can actually clean right down them that. And you can work your way around. I mean, we've got a, 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 a notes on the website um, about single tuft of brushing. I think there's actually a blog post about it, but it's the same basic principle, but with this, you're actually getting right down underneath the gum margin and as you can see if you've got a partly erupted wisdom tooth pardon me again you can get right down in there if you've got this vacation so this is where the two roots have become exposed so you've got recession there's been a bony support has been lost so for some reason gum disease most likely the bone has has been broken down here by bacterial plaque and what's happened is the gum has receded back and all of a sudden you've got this this vacation which is in between the space, in between the two roots of the lower molar there, you can get that right down in there. And this is to supplement what you're doing with your toothbrush and with your interdental brushes. So you will use an appropriate size interdental brush. So again, let me show you down there. Here, take an interdental brush and you can clean right in underneath that. And that is actually really, really important because those areas, those rectifications, are at more risk of becoming further uh, damaged if you don't keep them clean. Because again, if anywhere the bacterial plaque can loiter undisturbed, where the biofilm can get thicker, the bacteria can colonize it, the bacteria can get organized, it's like a wee community living in your mouth, and they get up to mischief if you give them an opportunity, because they're opportunists that we later, so they are. So what you want to do is make sure that you're breaking up that plaque biofilm. So it's that space between the gum and the tooth, that gingival sulcus that in health will be, in health, it will be two to three millimeters, and you can get at that readily with your toothbrush used down, round, small circular side to side motions you can see all I'm doing is vibrating the bristle tips it's not it's not scrubbing the floor it's gentle movements if you use an electric brush you get an electric brush up on your own let's get the most popular one just because I have it here so again with this you need to put a certain amount of pressure on this so the bristles get down and up the gum margin. Just get it down there so you can see the bristles splay out. I thought this way actually it might work. You can see the way the bristles splay out against the gum margin and get into that little crevice. Can you see that? And the big difference between brushing with an manual toothbrush and an electric toothbrush is the power. With an electric toothbrush, you just have to set it in place and let it do the work. With a manual toothbrush, 
you've you've got to actually make the bristles work for you. You've got to get them down in at the crevice and you've got to make them work. Car toothbrush, it moves seven and a half thousand times an hour or more. And um, you just need to let that sit and do the work for you. And I always I always say, you know, brushing with an electric toothbrush is actually quite boring because you just move from tooth to tooth. But you can see how that moves in at the margin there. Really boring, but it does do it more effectively. So those are the things that we know about gum brushing. It's important that a tactile film is your biggest torture. It's one of those things. Let me switch this back to the other camera. Um, so this way again. And let you see my, my old face. Um, but it's important because you want to get that biofilm under control and you want to keep it under control. And it's something we all do for ourselves every single day. And that's important that it's making the time to do it every single day. And it is not the most exciting thing you will do. But my goodness me, it can help not only your oral health and your gum health, it also has huge benefits for your overall health. Because inflammation in your mouth is connected to inflammation in other parts of your body. And we know there's really strong links with gum inflammation and diabetes and heart disease and stroke and arthritis. So there's a really a lot to do with um, inflammatory conditions. And kidney disease, all these different things are actually connected to inflammation in your mouth. So keeping your mouth, in particular your gums, healthy has benefits elsewhere in your mouth. That's why it is really, really important to keep disturbing and breaking down that biofilm so it doesn't get the chance to mature and the bacteria pollinate it and get themselves organized. I often describe bacteria a bit like having children. When they're babies, you put them in one place and they stay put. Then they start to crawl and they get up to a little bit of mischief. Um, and then when they get to teenage years, they like to uh, not have anything to do with at home, they like to get their friends around, they like to get organised, and boy, they will get up to mischief if you give them the opportunity. So what you don't want to happen is the plant pile from in your mouth to be mature enough and there long enough for the bacteria to grow and actually really cause you problems. And how long they have to be there depends on how many types, certain types of bacteria you have, how long they're there, how your body responds to that onslaught from those bacteria. So how much effort one person will have to put in, they will be very different how much effort somebody else has to put in. And that's really important to remember because we all know somebody who never seems to brush their teeth, never seems to put any time in, and never has a problem. And then there's people at the other end of the spectrum, they seem to be forever cleaning their teeth and going to the dentist and having regular professional uh, cleanings and, and all this stuff and still think they have a problem. It's it's how your body responds and it's how your body responds at that time. So when you're young and you're fit and you're well, your body can deal with most things that flows out it. So from the point of view of bacteria and things like that. As we get older, our immune systems don't work so well. So we become more susceptible to inflammation. So as we go, we, we may well have to put more effort in. So you may have, have got through 20 or 30 years that you've never really had to bother about cleaning in between your teeth. And all of a sudden you go to the dentist uh, or the hygienist or the therapist and they're saying, well, actually, you know, you've got to do this and you've got to do this every single day if you want to stop gum disease getting the better hand of you. And that's what's really hard because you're trying to change something. Like, you know, it's not natural. We brush your teeth because we've always brushed your teeth. Interdental cleaning with brushes or floss or water floss or whatever is an extra layer to remember. But it's a really, really important thing to remember. And uh, it, there's lots of analogies we can use for only cleaning part of your... But if you think about it, if you um, have a shower and not wash your legs, or still, if you have a shower and don't clean the bits of you that you, you really should clean um, down below, you know, that's what you're talking about. You're not cleaning the places that allow access to bacteria. So it's really important to be thorough in your oral hygiene routine. Based on an electric toothbrush 
and interdental brushes. You want to do your interdental brushes first or at a completely different time of the day. It's whatever floats your boat, but do it every single day. For most people, once a day will be enough. Some people will have to do it more often than that, but go for quality over quantity. So tooth brushing thoroughly, last thing at night, one other time every single day. And that, if you've got gum inflammation, if your gums are bleeding, it will take you longer than that bare two minutes. And two minutes is an awful lot longer than we think. So try, if nothing else, you know, if you're going to do one thing, what one thing could you change? Is there one little thing that you feel that you could take on board? Is that spending a full two minutes brushing your teeth? Even once a day? Because that will have the biggest impact because using a toothbrush thoroughly, and I mean every surface of all your teeth, the outside, the inside, the biting surface, around all the gum margins. If you're doing that thoroughly, you will get around 60 to 70% of that plaque biofilm disrupted. That other 30 to 40% is the bit that's stuck in between your teeth and you need to disrupt that as well. But go for the thing that you feel you can do and get on top of that first before you add in something else. Gum brushing and gum pocket brushing is very much getting underneath that gum margin. And you do it with a, 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 a saltless brush. So you can clean those gum margins with a toothbrush, an electric toothbrush. It's going for how you use it more than what you use. So some people will manage absolutely brilliantly with a manual toothbrush. And there's really no justification for them switching. But for most people, they will do a better job with an electric toothbrush, but they need to use the electric toothbrush properly. And that's the big thing. Often the electric toothbrush is not used properly. And um, if you have got a pocket, you need to get down and you've got a wisdom tooth space, something like that. You can actually look at one of these. This is um, an interspace head. I think this is for um, the OLB. Um, other brands do do them. So we have got um, the Cure Props. Cure Props brushes come, the Cure Props Pro, Pro, which is the only Cure Props power brush we keep, has this little single tuft head with it. And again, with this, what you can do is you can use that down into those gum pockets. Let's see, you can see down in there. And if you have a missing tooth, don't forget to clean that surface. You know, these surfaces are going to get missed if you don't actually spend the time and get in round there. So what often happens is somebody on maybe, just because this tooth has fallen out on, somebody has maybe lost the tooth and you're merrily brushing but your toothbrush doesn't actually clean those side surfaces. You need to swing your toothbrush around. And again, it's back to watching what you're doing, spend the time doing it thoroughly, look in the mirror, look in reasonable light, and actually focus on the task in hand. And again, back to that mindful toothbrush and taking that bit of time to actually spend on yourself and actually feeling the clean. Use your toothbrush dry. Likewise, with your single tufted, if you're going to root brush, you can use it dry. You don't need to put anything on it. If you've got a lot of inflammation, what you may want to do is use some of the gels that are specially formulated for that. So there's the likes of, of course, they'll gel most people are familiar with, but there's things like perio gel um, and ginger gel, which is hyaluronic acid. And it, it is great for actually getting gum inflammation under control. So all those little tips and hints hopefully have given you a little bit of an insight to what you're trying to do is clean the gingival crevice. And what I'm trying to do is clean the gingival crevice, that little area between the gum and the tooth. And that's just standard. Everybody should be cleaning and what we call a sculptular technique. So you need to be cleaning that, that gum soft. It's that little, right, just the gum, gum and the tooth make that little crevice. And your toothbrush bristles need to be in there and they need to be engaging and they need to be breaking that biofilm down because if you're not getting in there, you're missing a trick and you're actually putting a lot of effort in and not getting the value for your buck. So you want to get value for the effort you're putting in. Um, do it last thing at night, one other time in the day. Um, you also then want to clean in between 
thoroughly and your dental team will advise you what is best for you. If you're not sure, book a coaching session with me and we'll talk through it. We'll send you some samples. You can try different things because I can guarantee you there will be something for you to clean in between your teeth. There's so much available now and um, there's not one size fits all. For some people, they'll need to use combination, maybe gloss, single tufted brush, and um, a couple of different sizes of the dental brushes, but there's something for everybody there. Use your single tuft, your super slim, or one of the other ones to supplement, particularly into deep pockets that you can get better access in there. And it is all about getting access to that thumb socket. And if you're not sure, speak to your uh, dental care team, your dental, your oral health team are there to help you. And it's one of the reasons why you, you should really be seen regularly. You want to avoid needing a lot of treatment and the best way to avoid big things, costing money and not necessarily being a fun day out is to nip them in the bud to catch up when it's small. So if you are a non-smoker and your gums are bleeding, something's not quite right. So when you spit out, if you see blood, there's something just not 100% right. What you want to do is try and pin down where that's coming from. So the most commonly missed places for right-handed people are the inside of the bottom right, down in here, and as you turn your toothbrush around. So when you're coming around the corner, and you turn your toothbrush over, the chances are you go right to the back of your mouth and you miss the teeth at the corner. Okay, so really important to watch what you're doing so you're brushing every surface of all teeth around the gum line. If you're left-handed, chances are you're going to miss on the inside, on the bottom left, okay, because again, it's an awkward place to be. Often suggest either starting there or using your opposite hand because that can actually also help you focus really, really well on that. Somewhere else that got around the gum line is often miss that gum area is on the outside of upper molars. And the reason being, when you open your mouth, these muscles get really, really taut and tight and there's not enough room for your toothbrush to get in there. So what you want to do is put your toothbrush in. Let me try and go in my mouth. What you want to do is put your toothbrush in there and then close your mouth around it. And all of a sudden you've got room to maneuver. So if you open your mouth, you've nowhere to keep going further back, particularly if you know you've got wisdom teeth. So what you want to do is put your toothbrush in, close your mouth, relax the muscles, then you can go that bit further back. And if you know you have a problem, if your dental team is a bit concerned about this area or that area, what you want to do is try and start there first, okay? And go, as I say, for quality over quantity. Take your time and do it properly. And you're far better doing it really well, lasting at night and one other time a day than half a dozen quick brushes. The reason I, if you're you think, oh, well, I brush my teeth six times, four or six times a day, the chances are you always start in the same place. So that area is always getting the best brush because you probably are doing four or six fast brushes. So your certain teeth are never getting brushed rather than actually being really methodical. If you are going to brush your teeth three or four times in a day, try and start a different place. That's actually really hard to do, particularly if you're a busy person, you're in a rush and you're trying to, to do more um, in a short space of time. You're far better trying to focus for two minutes, set the timer on your phone if necessary. Um, electric toothbrushes are great because they give you that uh, quarter, uh, quarter of your mouth, that sort of quadrant beep. Don't get bogged down with that. I often say just ignore the beat because the chances are it's going to take you longer, particularly if you're trying to retrain yourself to brush in a different manner and brush particularly brush around your gums. So you're cleaning not just your teeth, you're cleaning that little crevice around your gum, that little, little crevice at the neck of your teeth. So if you think about cleaning your fingernails after you've been digging in the garden or whatever one door, cleaning the tiles, whatever, um, and you take a nail brush you've got to put a little bit of pressure on that nail brush to get in underneath your fingernail the same thing to get to the gingival crevice to get that little sulcus that you want to clean you've got to put a little bit of pressure on and there's a different gentle pressure you are not scrubbing the floor 
you want an analogy for that? Think about when you used to write things with pencil on paper and then you rubbed it out. And if you took a rubber and you rubbed too hard, it tore and damaged the paper. You just need to be gentle. You just need to be really specific. And that's where attention to detail really comes in. Watching what you're doing, taking your time, every surface of every tooth, because that stuff is there. It starts to build up that plaque biofilm, starts to build up in your tooth almost as soon as you have cleaned your tooth. And over a period of time, over a period of course of the day, it gets thicker, it matures. And if your mouth is dry, it will mature more rapidly and the bacteria can get organized faster. So what you want to do is make sure that you are addressing any oral dryness because dry mouth is sick and lead to increased risk of gum problems, gum inflammation, increased risk of decay. So really important that what you want to do is make sure that you're breaking up this tactile gum. Well, make sure you're using a fluoride toothpaste. And fluoride is not just to strengthen your teeth, uh, which is what we all sort of kind of always think about, but also has antibacterial properties. And depending which type of fluoride is in your toothbrush, you will find that some are slightly higher in antibacterial properties than others. But just make sure you're, you're maximizing the effort. So piece size raw with teeth, spread it all around your teeth. Off you go, every surface, all teeth around the gum line. So watch what you're doing. Because uh, seeing honestly is believing. And if you're not sure you think your teeth are clean, give yourself some disturbing tablet. It might be a big eye opener um, and actually see where the class is. It's not just something kids do. It's something that you can do in the privacy of your own home. Put a bit of Vaseline in your lips. Chew up a uh, disclosing tablet. Make sure it's well mixed with your slider, spread it all around, then rinse out, spit out, and then you can see where you need to brush. Even better, clean your face brush and then do it that way you're checking up on your mouth and it really does go with your technique. So there you go. That is all from me. Don't forget, before you go to bed tonight, brush your teeth thoroughly, every surface, every tooth, spit your toothpaste out afterwards. Do not rinse the maximum benefit out of your toothpaste. And if you've got any questions, I'm going to be around for the next half hour or so. So buy them my way and I will be my very best to answer them. So look after yourself and I'll say from your best brushing body, don't forget to brush before you go to bed tonight. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye.